this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a realistic looking scene like this one here using some of the tools from Cine Studio, including M Tracker 3D, M Film Look, M Flare 2, and uh, some M Adjustment Layers. So the biggest thing to note is the parallax that we're getting between the foreground building and the background. So let's get into it. All right, so as you can see, we have our clip here and we've got the movement that we want. We are trying to create a sort of parallax looking scene outside. So with that green screen, I've already done a bit of color board correction and I've gone ahead and keyed out the green. So we are in good shape in that regard. I'm gonna turn my green screen keyer off for now and I'm going to go ahead and add M Tracker 3D. But before I do that, I actually want to do a very fast mask on me. Now we could use Emroto AI, that would be completely fine. But in this scenario, it might actually be a little bit faster and easier to add a shape mask. We're gonna invert that, put it over top of me because it does not have to be completely perfect and just do a couple keyframes to keep me out of that scene. That way we don't have to worry about running Emroto AI on this clip. So we'll open my transforms, set some keyframes, and then just move back and forth on the playhead to make sure that that mask is moving with me. All right, there we go, simple enough. And now we will go back down to M Tracker 3D Go ahead and apply M Tracker 3D, and we will click track. Now, one of the reasons we are using M Tracker 3D in this situation as opposed to M Tracker Surface is because with M Tracker 3D, we do have a little bit more flexibility in regard to our Z space. And that is one of the things that really helps sell this effect is the fact that we can move things in Z space with M Tracker 3D. So let's let it continue analyzing frames and we will see you when it's done. All right, now that that is done, we can go and we can copy our track. We can go ahead and turn our shape mask off and we can turn our green screen keyer on. Let's go in and we will find M Tracker 3D and we are going to be doing this with our drop zones. Now I did want to share that in my first tests, I was using a basic drop zone. However, I realized because of the movement of this camera here, we really needed to use our horizon screen. So we used the curved drop zone here. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to drag that in. Make sure that that is timed appropriately. And then let's go ahead and paste our track. We can use our position icon here, turn that on. I'm gonna hold shift down so you can see that I've got my gizmo. And then I'm going to just select sort of the middle area here of the scene. Now let's check that and see if that is tracked in. That is, it looks good. Fantastic. So now I need to start prepping this and I'm going to actually prep it on the outside of the window. And because this is keyed, I can drop my horizon screen down beneath. And then you can see that it is now behind the scene there. I'm gonna turn animations in and out off and then I'm going to adjust my parameters so that that looks like it fills the screen outside. And again, the, where the magic happens is in our content position. I can set my Z space to look like it's back further away outside the window. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to do a negative 250. And then you can see that that is out there and it looks like it's outside in that sort of Z space area. And again, I need to continue just scaling that up appropriately. See how that looks. Nice, and now you're starting to see that movement as it looks like it is way further away. Now I can go ahead and populate my drop zone. So I'm going to go over to drop zone source 
and we're going to find the image. For these images, I did find just a stock photo and I was able to separate the foreground and background in Photoshop and used generative fill to just replace the holes that was left behind from the buildings. In this instance, this is my foreground image. I'm going to go to this one, click to apply. We will apply clip and then we will continue to use our parameters to make adjustments until we feel like that horizon is accurate. All right, that is looking really good so far. Over here, I'm going to continue coming down. I do not need reflections. I'm gonna just go ahead and turn that off. I don't need a refraction. We can add a little bit of noise so that it kind of matches the noise that's already present in our shot, but we don't need a lot. And I'm going to add this blur because this is supposed to be something that I'm looking out at a distance and I'm just gonna increase that blur until that looks a little bit more natural. So why don't we say 45, that looks good. Now, because I already have this, I'm going to option click and drag up. We are duplicating our clip and we are now going to apply our buildings into that same sort of drop zone. Let's click apply clip. And then I'm going to move my building out in Z space so that it appears closer to me. So you can see my background is negative 250. We can make this one maybe negative 100. So it's going to appear closer, but then we scale it down then move our position until it's starting to look a little bit more natural. So something else that's really cool about these drop zones that are curved, as you can see, there is still a curve that is curving inward toward me. If you go over in your inspector to drop zone curvature, you can actually adjust that curvature, as you can see here, which is really nice. So I'm actually going to curve that around ever so slightly so it looks as though those are a little bit off that axis and again I can maybe scale up just a little bit bring that down on Y I am going to be adding some black bars to this on the top and bottom so this little bit here where you can see the buildings are not quite connecting is really no big deal uh, and then I can also make a change to my rotation just so it looks a little bit straighter there in the center. Let's see how that looks. All right, that is looking really, really cool. And we are getting that parallax. If you'll actually watch this light area here, that is where you can really see how the buildings are moving relative in the Z space to the background. And so it really gives off that illusion you can also see it here. I love that kind of river back there. You can see that difference. Really, really nice. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to come over and we are going to change our Gaussian blur. We're at 45. Obviously, this is a little closer, so we want it to be a little bit more in focus there. So maybe we can change it to about 30. That's looking pretty good. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add an adjustment layer because we are going to add our flare. So let's go up to M adjustment layer. I'm going to click and drag the adjustment layer onto the entirety of the clip. I'm going to find M flare two. And in this case, we felt dimmed floodlight looked the best with this color. And then we only had to modify slightly. I'm going to click and apply this. Now this is where a lot of testing and a lot of fun started to happen. We realized that we didn't have a very solid point to track this sun in because I am covering up so much of the screen. However, we also realized that if I just simply duplicate this horizon screen one more time, this is my foreground buildings, I'm going to come over here on the Y position and I'm going to bring that up like this. I'm going to set my content position again back to negative 250 because that's where our background is. I can turn off my blur 
can turn off my noise because we are literally only using this to track. I am now going to disable my other clips so that we can only track the movement of the buildings. If that makes sense, it should. Typically, you could disable all of these clips other than your actual background horizon. However, I just found that this tip would be useful in case you are running into any issues. Perhaps you have a horizon that doesn't have a lot of contrast for tracking. This is also another good way to do this. It's really quick and the tracking is usually perfect. So let's open up our tracker. We're just going to track that building so we get the movement to be the same and track forward and backward. Fantastic. We can now turn everything back on and we can turn that horizon screen that we just used for tracking off. And then you can see that that sun is tracked to the background and the sky. Very nice. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and move this down into a position that we think looks a little bit more realistic. Bring the intensity down. We can modify our colors to be a little bit more in line with the scene there. We are now presented with another very slight problem and that is the fact that this sun is looking as though it is up above my hat and head. So to fix this over in our inspector, we will go to animation, track brightness. We're gonna turn that on. And then you can see this threshold slider here. And we are going to bring that down until we start to see that light. And then we will just go right back until it disappears. So now anything that is darker than that threshold, that light is going to kind of disappear. So you can see it again right here. So let's just bring the threshold up till it disappears because we want it to be right on the edge. We want that threshold to be as low as it has to be. And then you can see there. And what's really cool is it is going to react to the building and such as well. Now I want that sun to still be back there. So I'm actually going to move that position to about here. There we go. And you can see that when my hat goes in front of it, it still is just going to disappear and then come right back in. Really nice. All right, I would like to add another adjustment layer and we are going to bring this in on top. And now we are going to use M Film Look to give the rest of the scene a really cohesive look. Going to grab Aurora and then I'm going to make some changes to our flare and some of our settings over in M Film Look. And to be honest, you can continue going crazy with this. We ended up actually going back in with M Tracker 3D and we used our helicopter and we ended up animating that helicopter to come in and land on top of the building. So in order to do that, once again, we will paste our track. We set that gizmo around the center but then we used our position to modify the position so that it could look as though it was on top of a building make sure that our z space is the correct z space and by further adjusting light colors and blurs we were able to modify that to look as though it were part of our scene we did use colorization and setting keyframes appropriately on that helicopter to make it look as though it is flying behind our building and out through our window. And that is about it from me. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial on using M-Tracker 3D to composite these elements into a realistic three-dimensional space. Drop a comment below. We love to hear feedback from you so that we can answer any questions that you may have. My name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com and we'll see you on the next one.